What's up guys, Random Razor here with another tech video for you guys today and today we take a quick look at four of Apple's new adapters for the 2016 MacBook Pro. So of course though, for you, let's check out these adapters, do some special with them and test them out. For those of you who are picking up Apple's new MacBook or the 2016 MacBook Pro, you're definitely going to need some adapters to make use of your legacy devices. Even though USB-C is supposed to be the way of the future, we're still stuck with many legacy devices as they still work. And unlike iPhones where we upgrade every one or two to three years, stuff like this, for example, my USB thumb drive here, is something that I don't plan on upgrading every year with. So we have four major adapters here. We have a USB-C to USB adapter, a SanDisk SD card reader, Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3, a USB to VGA multiport adapter, and these are probably the ones that most people would need or use. So let's unbox these and check them out. So popping this open, first thing we get is the USB to USB-C adapter. The next one that we have here, our Thunderbolt adapter. It's a little bit bigger than I thought. Next we have a very important adapter for those of you who do a lot of video or anyone who just uses an SD card device of some sort and that is the SanDisk Extreme Pro SD UHS 2 USB-C reader. This is the only one that Apple sells which means it's probably good and it's a really nicely designed which we will check out very soon just pops open like so. Looks like we get some warranty information as well as the SD card reader itself. And that is pretty much it. And there's one more adapter here that just arrived today. This is probably the most expensive one I picked up so far, the USB-C to VGA multi-port adapter. Let's slice this one open as well. And this one is quite a bit bigger than the other ones. We also get some information here about how to use it and limited warranty information. Alrighty, so here are all the adapters here together. As you guys can see, they're not like huge things to carry around. They're more of an inconvenience to carry around, uh, considering it's just an extra piece of cable to look around with you along with your MacBook. So take a quick look at each of the adapters here, starting off with the USB adapter. Again, it's for USB 2.0 and 3.0 devices. I have a USB 3.0 uh, memory stick here. You just stick it in and you're ready to go. The only thing I hate about this adapter, I'm not sure if it's just the model I have, but it's very difficult to take stuff in and out of because it's such a tight fit. So you really have to tug at the cable or in my case, a USB stick to take it out. The next one that we have here is the Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter. Or in other words, the Thunderbolt 3 is basically USB-C. And it's a great choice for those of you who have a Thunderbolt display or something like that. And all I have to do is just plug it in like so. Plug it into the MacBook. And now your Thunderbolt device is enabled. The last Apple brand one that we have here is the USB-C to VGA multiport adapter. This is definitely a must have for students, uh, especially if you're on a budget, it's the best bang for your buck adapter because it comes with three different ports on here. The VGA port is the most important because most lecture halls has projectors and whatnot. If you're doing a presentation or something, you will find that they still use VGA. You also have a USB-C port here to kind of replace the one that's already plugged in, as well as a standard USB port here uh, for whatever USB enabled devices you have. So here's what the multi-port adapter looks like when it's all used up. And as you guys can see here, I have a USB transmitter for my Logitech solar powered keyboard. Next, a VGA cord for my Samsung display. And last but not least, it's a USB-C charging cable for the MacBook. And yes, you can actually charge your MacBook off this adapter, which is pretty cool. Last but not least is the SanDisk high speed SD card reader here, which is completely optimized for the MacBook Pro, particularly because it's designed to give you access to the next USB-C port right next to it, which is why this piece is extended. And also it is high speed. So for those of you who have class 10 SD cards or higher, this is definitely a good one to get because it means you can transfer your photos and videos from the SD card to your MacBook very quickly. So how has using all these adapters been? Well, in short, Everything is working. I haven't had any hiccups yet. Nothing has automatically disconnected or something like that. So far, everything is working as they are designed too. My only gripe with the adapters really is, first off, the aesthetics. Obviously, all this plugged into my computer here. It doesn't look that pretty, but I'm still kind of working on my setup. But nonetheless, it's not the most prettiest thing in terms of a desk setup with your new MacBook Pro. In addition to that is basically the financial cost. Um, I probably spent about uh, $90 to 100 bucks on for these adapters here uh, with taxes and whatnot. And the fact that I had to spend that extra money just so I can plug in my monitor, um, keyboard, printer, just basic things like that seems to be a bit of an inconvenience, but I guess that's the way to go in order to use all that stuff with the newer line of MacBooks. 
Should this be a turnoff from buying these computers? Well, as you all know, someone's gonna have to take a step and put USB-C ports on the new laptops or iMacs and you know it doesn't matter what brand you are but USB-C is the future and the great thing about having USB-C now on the MacBook is that you are kind of future proofing your computer if you buy newer devices in the future whether it's a monitor or a USB thumb drive it's going to be optimized for the new computer at which you already have. That being said should that deter you from buying the new MacBook? Not necessarily everything works with the computer which is of course a good thing uh, the only fact of the matter is that it's going to be a little bit inconvenient to use at the same time. So not really sure how to conclude this video other than the fact that the adapters work. Yes, they come at a cost. They're decently made. It's not like they're going to break on you anytime soon unless you smash it or something uh, like that. But nonetheless, for those of you worrying about Apple's adapters that they do sell on the Apple online store, I recommend them because they work, but unfortunately at a cost. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Hope you all enjoyed the video. And if you guys have any questions or comments about these adapters, let me know in the comment section there down below. Hit that like button as always helps me out and I'll see you all in the next video.